We don't have any talking candlesticks, but if that's a deal breaker, we'll cram one in there somewhere. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times DreamWorks roasted Disney. You know, he's all high in the front, he can never get to the back. You always need someone to do the back of your hair. Oh, thank you, Mother. Mother! For this list, we'll be looking at the many shots DreamWorks fired at Disney through their various animated movies, either making parodies of their characters, incorporating them in silly ways, or by turning them into villains or mockeries. This list will contain spoilers, so consider this your warning. Is there an awesome dig that we didn't cover? Let us know in the comments down below. Just don't roast us. Number 10. Have you seen my dad? Flushed away. Some searches take a lifetime. In Flushed Away, a spoiled rich rat named Roddy gets flushed down in the sewers. Bon voyage, me old cream cracker. Ah, Hold stop, your nose. Stop, stop. You can't do this. You were going to try and flush me. Let's see ah. how you like it. And during the calamity, Roddy briefly meets a large goldfish belonging to the pirate Pegleg, who asks him if he's seen his dad. You see my dad? The funny joke is a nod to Finding Nemo, which follows a clownfish trying to reunite with his young son. While Nemo was young and energetic, Peg Legs Goldfish is older and looks less than enthusiastic. We'd be too if we'd been separated from our families for so long. Unfortunately, Roddy robs us of seeing more of the bootleg Nemo by chucking him aside almost immediately after finding him. Hey, manners Roddy. Shady customer. The captain of the Jammy Dodger, if you can find it. I know where it is. Number nine, props to Jack Horner, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Jack Horner's got all the props in the world, but that's not us giving this villain praise. He's actually got just about every memorable prop from a Disney movie you can imagine. Yes, I collect enchanted objects, magical icons, baubles and gigas, and la di da and blah, blah, blah. Check it out! I'm walking on a magic carpet! And he's not exactly kind to his collection either. In Puss in Boots The Last Wish, he walks over Aladdin's carpet, shatters Cinderella's glass slipper, and even chucks Poseidon's trident at Puss. I hate talking fairy tales. Animals! Ah! <laughs> Get back here! These once memorable and highly important artifacts from Disney were now just playthings for a cruel Jack. Handle these objects with care, Jack. We're begging you. I'll get you, my kitties, and your little dog, too. Number eight, the clock and the candlestick, the boss baby. Do babies usually have clocks and candlesticks as toys? Well, the boss baby does, apparently. In 2017, Disney released the live action Beauty and the Beast, and DreamWorks was very aware of that. Now, Lumia, as head of the household, I demand that you put her back in her cell at once. What do you want to be for the rest of your life, Coxworth? A man or a mental clock? A trailer for the boss baby aired showing the titular boss baby Ted playing with a clock and a candlestick. Come one step closer. And I'll illuminate you with a soft glow. And I'll clean your clock. Oh! Ah! I'm blowing it! They weren't any normal clocks and candlesticks, though. The two had a striking resemblance to Lumiere and Cogsworth. DreamWorks didn't stop there. They also trolled Disney by airing the trailer exclusively in preview screenings for Beauty and the Beast. Did DreamWorks show Disney who's the boss? We'll let you decide on that. You've all made an excellent decision to see this movie. You're clearly shrewd, so let me lay this out for you. On March 31st, my movie DreamWorks The Boss Baby will be coming out. Number seven, Dr. Zara's and Evo Merida, Abominable. Abominable's Dr. Zara is one nasty zoologist. She served as the main antagonist on the film, hunting down the Yeti Everest and his human friends. I'll make sure the Yeti's out. You are never going to escape again. But did you know she also bears a resemblance to Princess Merida from Disney's Brave? They both have similar frizzy red hair and a penchant for getting into some serious trouble. But where Merida ultimately remains a good person, Zara's the complete opposite. She tries to harm Everest after all. That's heartless. <laughs> Zara is one of many times DreamWorks flipped the script by taking a Disney character and turning them to the dark side. At least Dr. Zara got her comeuppance. No! 
Number six, an evening stroll. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. What's the matter? Lives flashing before your eyes? In a true blink and you miss it moment, Puss, Shrek, and Donkey all stroll care freely across a bridge. This moment plays as a glimpse of one of Puss's numerous lives during Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. While it's well known as one of the movie's cameos featuring our favorite green orc Shrek, it's also a brief parody on The Lion King. In the Disney classic, Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa all dance and sing across various landscapes. All we need now to make DreamWorks parody even funnier is to see Shrek and the gang doing a cover of Hakuna Matata. Who wouldn't want to see that? It's a problem free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Number five, Fairy Godmother and Prince Charming. Shrek 2. I'm afraid Fiona isn't really warming up to Prince Charming. Um, FYI, not my fault. No, 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 of course it's not, dear. There's doing an interpretation of beloved characters, and then there's just doing something that's so entirely out of left field. And honestly, that's probably why DreamWorks' version of the Fairy Godmother and Prince Charming are so much more iconic. Both Disney fairy tale figures were part of countless character subversions in Shrek 2 that poke fun at the original versions. The original kind and wise fairy godmother became manipulative and downright evil. The well mannered and graceful Prince Charming became the fairy godmother's narcissistic son. These new hilarious revamps breathed some new, much needed life in the otherwise stale and one note characters. My diet is ruined. I hope you're happy. Uh, okay, two Renaissance wraps, no mayo, chili rings. I'll have the medieval meal. Yeah, one medieval meal. Number four Winnie the Pooh's Illegal Dealings, B Movie. After successfully suing humanity for stealing honey and exploiting countless bee populations, bees and humans work together to give honey back to the hives. The court finds in favor of the bees! Vanessa, we won! Yay! I knew you could do it! High five! Oh, oh sorry! This line of work also involves putting a stop to all illegal honey dealings. And when a duel who looks similar to Winnie the Pooh and Piglet are seen sharing some of this sweet commodity, Winnie's swiftly knocked out. Take him out. We'll have a little nausea for a few hours, then he'll be fine. This hilarious segment has no hesitation in portraying Winnie and Piglet as criminals. Winnie, how could you? You should be better than this. And while we're on topic, could we please get more of the ATFH doing honey bust? There's definitely a story there. And we will no longer tolerate derogatory B negative nicknames. But it's just a prance about stage name. Unnecessary inclusion of honey and bogus health products. Number three, Pinocchio's choice of undergarments. Shrek 2. Pinocchio, you're not fooling anyone. We know you're not forever 21. In Shrek 2, Shrek, Donkey, and Puss need help breaking out of a dungeon. Multiple characters arrive to their aid, including Pinocchio. I must hold on before I too go totally mad. Shrek? Donkey? Too late. For a few brief seconds during the stealth mission to save them, Pinocchio actually looks pretty impressive. But that doesn't last when he gets stuck in his strings. It's also while he's suspended in mid-air that we get some hilarious and kind of unexpected news. Pinocchio's secret is that he's wearing ladies' underwear. Quick! Say something crazy like I'm wearing ladies' underwear. I'm, I, uh, I'm wearing ladies' underwear. <laughs> Are you? In such a bizarre and hysterical reveal that makes Pinocchio once again the butt of a joke, and when Pinocchio lies about it, his nose comically grows long enough that it actually helps the gang escape. Number two, is Lord Farquaad Michael Eisner? Shrek, there might be a resemblance. Ahem. Run, 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 as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. In Dream's work first Shrek movie, audience met the short-tempered king, Lord Farquaad. This annoying despot quickly became a character we love to hate. 
But did you know he might actually have been based off the then CEO of Disney, Michael Eisner? We need to stress that it's not been explicitly confirmed, but it does feel likely. Mirror, mirror, show her to me. Show me the princess. <laughs> Perfect. DreamWorks was even partially created due to differences between DreamWorks co-founder Jeffrey Katzenberg and Michael Eisner. And Farquaad's Kingdom of Duloc was a clear satire of Disneyland. It's quiet. Too quiet. Where is everybody? Whether or not he's a stand-in for Eisner, the character and his brand remain one of DreamWorks' best digs at Disney. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Ariel is the Villain Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken you just know DreamWorks has an axe to grind when they portray Ariel as problematic not once, but twice. Yeah, we haven't forgotten when an Ariel lookalike tried to break up Shrek and Fiona's relationship. You're the Little Mermaid, not the Little Home Wrecker. So I said I'm a snowball running, running down into the spring that's coming all this love. Shortly after Disney's 2023 Little Mermaid, DreamWorks released their own movie with a Little Mermaid. Except Chelsea's not as warm and welcoming as you think. In fact, she was the villain in Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken. Oh, there is no Chelsea. I am Narissa. What's what's happening to you? Surprise. I'm a flippin' mermaid. That's right, Chelsea was actually Queen Narissa. She manipulated, betrayed, and attacked Ruby in her pursuit of the Trident of Oceanus. It's sad to see a mermaid be so cold-blooded, but DreamWorks doesn't mess around when it comes to taking shots at Disney's IPs. Oh, it feels so good to be back. And this time, I'm getting rid of you for good. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.